thought I think you maybe ought to because uh, Russell, uh, you know, he's pretty uh, he's pretty strong-willed when he gets uh, gets going. You might just have Jake just round him up. Okay, I'll see you in here early then tomorrow. That's correct. Now you get you take Dirksen immediately and Mansfield and you just visit with them coming over and get their suggestions and tell them that uh, here's what we are committed to. We are roughly committed to about three billion dollars hold back, be thorough, postpone, cut. Now there are difference in each one of them. That does not mean that we're we're going to eliminate it, but means we're going to put it over into next year some way or other. Yeah. That's fiscal 67. Now, we just got six months to do it, December through June. Now, uh, three billion in programs, emphasize program, not spending, not expenditures, not in OA, but in programs. That means that we may have programmed uh, 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 in the education bill, they may have given me 200 million more than I asked for. Yes. And that's programmed by the Congress. Yes. We don't ask for that 200 million, so we that counts as a part of the program. Mm -hmm. Now we we've, we've specifically said program, never said expenditures. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. Yes, I see your point. Because in seven months you can't have but seven twelfths of the expenditure anyway. Yes. You follow me? Yes, I I get your point. Now. Uh, uh, so we we look at them, and the big substantial cuts that we're really making, we're going to hold back uh, mostly by uh, uh, the first question I think you ought to discuss with them is whether we could appropriately hold back any of the school lunch money in the afternoon, the milk uh, at 3 o'clock, and the impacted areas that they added to us. That's roughly $400 million. Uh, we, we're not doing it in our plans because we assume they overrode us and we don't want to look like we're overriding them when they're gone. So we don't touch that. But some of them say you ought to cut them a little bit proportionally. Uh, we're part of the school lunch program, but we don't think Nelson Rockefeller's kids and Lyndon Johnson's club ought to get it free at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it doesn't affect the 12 o'clock meal, and it doesn't affect the, uh, the poor kids at all. Uh, we put in a new program for poor kids at breakfast, yeah. but, uh, but uh, this is the, the what, rich ones. And uh, uh, we would like to cut uh, of that 200 million impacted school aid that Alexandria and Arlington gets a hell of a slice of. We'd like to give them more in, uh, under the elementary bill, which uh, uh, has a good formula for poor people and uh, less under impacted, but they overrode us. So the question is, do we cut any of that out? Yeah. We are not doing it, but if they would let us, it would be good if we could pick up 100 million that way from both of those programs. I don't know whether we ought to or not. Primarily where our money's gonna have to come from is uh, we're not gonna defer any land buying. We're going on by it so it won't go up. We're just going to uh, hold back a few months on some contracts yes, sir. and uh, slow down a little bit where we can. That'll cost us some money, all right, to do it, but we think it'll cost us less than inflation costs us. So what we're going to wind up doing is get three or four or five billion in programs, and that'll reflect to two billion or better in expenditures. Uh -huh. And that's what we promised to do. Then the question comes, what do we do in next year's budget? This year's budget will be between 125 and 30. They don't know that, but when we have our supplemental, that's what it'll run. Uh, we estimate it'd be 112. But the tight money is costing us about four and a half billion, four and a half to five billion. We were going to sell four billion worth of securities, so we can't sell them. We can just sell maybe one or two. The interest goes up 500 million. So that'll cost us, I'd say, five billion roughly there. So we had 113 budget, that would make 118 budget. Then uh, your defense will be somewhere from five to 15 extra. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, we'll just assume that's uh, 12 extra. Uh, 12 and 18 would be 130. Yeah. Now if we can keep that to 127, 28, we'd be mighty lucky. Yeah. But you really got 130 budget this year. Then next year, you'll have the same 130. Yeah. Then you'll have the increased cost of extra money. You'll have the increased cost of uh, defense, which will be, they figure that uh, it'll probably be five, six billion more than last year. 
and we'll have some increased obligations here. They, they if you can get by somewhere between 135 or 40 billion. Now the big key items is they're going to want to cut all the New Deal stuff, the New Society stuff. Yeah. We don't have much, as a matter of fact, for it that they will cut. Uh, poverty is the thing that they're likely to cut most. Education, they won't do much of that. Health, they won't do much of that. And they'll talk about it, but uh, they've got three little items. Teacher's Corps, rent supplements, demonstration cities, but all of them uh, don't have 50 million in them. All three of them put together don't amount to as much as uh, uh, not a fourth of what they got in the impacted area. That's correct. Uh, but they like to talk about it big. That impact area is a big bonanza for some of them. It's a big, terrible bonanza. And, uh, uh, so, uh, but I would try to convince Dirksen and Mansfield coming over that uh, while they did put in impacted area over our head, what do they think about our just cutting it like it did roads, just say 20% mm -hmm. or 25%? See, that would get us $50 million. That would get us enough money to finance all of our three programs, our supplemental uh, rents, only $20 million for that. Teacher scores, only 12 <laughs> so that's 32 and demonstration cities, I don't remember what it had, 24, I think, or something per year, yeah. yeah. But they want to cut all those three out. I don't believe that we, I believe we can hold fellas like Brooke and Percy on that in the Senate. I think the trouble is in the House. Can we do anything more on aid without wrecking it? No. No, the aid thing is not, you see, they've, they've wrecked it already. Uh, yeah. You're now uh, talking for the balance of this year, yeah. Yeah, we're going to hold a little back, but it's uh, it's inconsequential. Yeah. We're holding a little back with the FAA, and they say we're going to have an airplane wreck every time we cut anybody. They say it's going to be a disaster. But the total still comes in. At, uh, uh, when we do all of our cutting, Hubert, everything I'm talking to you about, we're still going to have 127, 28, 30 billion. Now, what's yeah. our revenue going to be? 117, 18. 117, I figure, and if the thing slow down like it might be a lot less. You, you just lose two or three billion right quick. Yeah, I know. But uh, 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 it's uh, uh, we got a 750 gross national product, and of course Bobby and them are going to say we ought to spend hundreds of millions. And uh, the demagogues are going to say cut out non-essential, but they can't ever tell you non-essential. Non-essential is a Negro in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Non-essential is cotton in New York. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I've got a real big question that we haven't resolved. State is just fighting us fiercely not to reduce the the cotton uh, alone, 20 and a half to 20. They want to cut it a half a cent, or 21 to 20 and a half, I forgot. Uh, agriculture is insisting they're obligated to do it and poking them or shoving them. But countries like Mexico say it ruins them and cuts off the lower price of cotton. And there's a direct fight in between those two. Because we really set the world price. Yes, sir. With that loan. And I don't know who's right. I would think Freeman knows more about agriculture than anybody. And I'd think that Russ knows more about foreign policy. And I know the president of Mexico just screamed. He said he wouldn't speak to us if we cut it again. He said we'd already wrecked him two or three times. But what they is, these new areas have gone in, you see, and sure. put theirs in, and uh, now they want us to hold it up so they can compete. You see, what happened is every time we cut acreage here, they went to Guatemala and Mexico and these other places and planted it. Now they want that price base to be uh, good because we really set the world price at that Memphis market. Yeah. I've been familiar with that. That's really a rough one. I don't know what the answer to it is. I really don't. But I'll be sure happy to talk to those fellows about it. Well, if you get a chance today, you might just say that you're going to see me tomorrow, and I'm going to ask your judgment on it, and uh, you'd like to hear both arguments. Get Freeman to tell you what he thinks on, I'll the, do that. on the other, and get uh, the man in state, whoever's doing it, and let's see. We've got to decide yes or no. My inclination is to go with Freeman. Yeah. I think anything you cut down, better in. It looks like to me that our cotton thing is deteriorating the point where it's just a few Jim Eastland. Yeah. Well, actually, of course, some of the same planters that uh, that left here are down there, you see. That's right. Yes, exactly. the, the That's capital, right. It's American capital down there. That's right. It's Anderson Clayton and these big guys. Yeah. But I don't know which side they're on. I'd be against them. <laughs> you ought to find them. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs>
I assume that uh, they, they, Pogue and Freeman, them raising hell to cut it. Maybe they want it cut. Well, I'm going to, I'll check out with Orville today. I'll have a little talk with him about that. It, and is it Rusk in the State Department? Uh, no, he doesn't Rusk. have an underling that's working on that. I don't know who it is. I would guess Tony Solomon. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I don't know. Rusk's the one presented it to me, but I usually handle everything with the... With Rusk. Uh, Rusk anyway, but I would ask Tony Solomon uh, uh, who is handling this cotton thing and who the specialist is and talk to him. Mm -hmm. He knows Mexico awful well, and he's yeah. the economist, and he's the outstanding... Uh, outstanding financial man that we have in state now. Yes, sir. Well, I'll do just that. By the way, uh, I'm sure you've been pestered to death on India, haven't you? Yes. Uh, uh, we've, uh, the, the, the ambassador over there is always an ambassador from India, not to India. And uh, uh, what, uh, what they want to do is get us into another billion dollar program, and we may ought to go into it. I don't know. Uh, we, we, I told Freeman, he wrote me a memo, and uh, every reason, every letter, every sentence in the memo was against any food allotment for India. Then he concluded by saying that we ought to give it to him this month. And uh, I called him up and read him sentence by sentence and said that if they, if they break their agreement on fertilizer, if they break their agreement on, uh, their own self-help. If they break their agreement on handling it between states distribution, uh, why do we make a new agreement? We're keeping ours. We're delivering every ton we've got. Now, do you think I'm going to be big enough damn idiot to write another check for a billion dollars to India each year? You're crazy. I'm just not going to do it. If we give them a billion dollars worth of food, we're going to give it to them with the Congress knowing all about it and with a congressional resolution and with a recommendation from the department and with the facts as to whether or not uh, they, they are frauds and they tell us they'll do things and then they don't do a dumb goddamn thing about them. So he agreed and Rusk agreed and everybody agreed and then some uh, underling went over from the State Department, got the Washington Post, leaked the story, said Johnson did it all, which he did. God damn right I did. Yeah, but that wasn't that with the very... But, but the, they weren't, that's the way the government does this. That's exactly the way. We got a man keeping diary and turn it over to Bobby and the cabinet. I don't know who it is. I just finished the Manchester book. But he writes a diary, and it looks very much like it's Freeman or Udall or Wirtz. And it's an awful thing, but... Well, I heard it was a damn lousy uh, business anyway. I'm very... You talking to Freeman, you might just ask him, say, by the way, Orv, uh, connection to these books. Are you keeping a diary? Uh, uh, are you keeping a diary? Just ask him. Yeah, I'll Just say I heard that they, 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 some reports come in that you do. Just ask him frankly if he does. Let's find out. Uh, that's an, that's an awful thing if they're doing that. If we've got a goddamn spy in our own cabinet that, that turns that stuff over to them. But uh, uh, it's, it's just unthinkable and unbelievable uh, the things that they say and do, particularly Ken o O'Donnell and, uh, and this Godfrey McHugh, who was Miss Kennedy's uh, uh, friend, you know, that they made a major general in charge of the Air Force uh, aide. And uh, they, I think we've got them pretty well because they deny conversation that we have recorded. <laughs> They they say that Bobby didn't uh, remember telling us to go and take the oath. Well, he didn't need to tell us what a goddamn reason to do, but he said not only should we take the oath, but he would have it called to us, and he did. And things of that kind. Now, then, I've, I see the edited parts where Schlesinger and this boy down runs a national paper who was his top man, uh, uh, Siegenthaler. And yeah. everything unfriendly to Bobby is eliminated from the book. Yeah. Well, they did a good job, make no mistake about it. I've heard a good deal about this book coming out. And uh, Schle Schlesinger came out yesterday and advocated the study of Kennedy assassination. I know. So you can see where that stuff heat's coming from. Yeah. You don't think that he would be doing things like that just to, uh, without somebody knowing it. Uh, Mark Lane said in the New York Times the day before yesterday, the fellow wrote the introduction for his book. Mark Lane's a comment, the fellow yeah. traveler. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, he uh, wrote a story that 
that Bobby had told him, told his man that wrote the introduction, to keep up the good work. <laughs> you think about it, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye.